couple of days ago, the best part of the United Kingdom, Scotland, held their BAFTA award ceremony, and they had an outstanding Lifetime Achievement Award, and they gave it to Peter Capaldi, who is one of the best Scotsmen and is also the 12th Doctor. We did know a few weeks ago that Peter Capaldi would be the recipient of the Lifetime Achievement Award, but that didn't make the moment any less um, wonderful to see. We also got a few tribute videos as well, people celebrating Peter Capaldi's career, Jenna Coleman did, uh, Stephen Moffat did, but Michelle Gomez's one was absolutely my favourite. Peter Capaldi! Lifetime Achievement Award, that's right, that's what you're getting, the old carriage clock award, some would say too young for that, but then you have been giving us phenomenal performances, indelible performances for decades. So that was Michelle Gomez's little tribute to Peter Capaldi. We, we, what we forget about Peter Capaldi, though, in terms of his career, is that he didn't start off exclusively as an actor. He was a artist uh, when he was at school. He would do like sketch work, and he was an incredibly talented artist, according to his teachers. But he was also a filmmaker. He was a director, and his big like breakout short film netted him an Oscar win. Peter Capaldi is an Oscar winning doctor, but it's not for his acting. It was for doing a short film decades ago, uh, which is an outstanding bit of trivia if you wanted any sort of like, um, if you wanted a, a Doctor Who trivia quiz question. Like, oh, okay, so uh, which Doctor has won an Oscar? And can you tell me what the Oscar was for? It's Peter Capaldi and it was for a short film, but he did win a Lifetime Achievement Award at the BAFTAs. And I've got the clip and we're gonna listen to his speech. Thank you, um, thank you so much. Thank you, Phyllis, that's a lovely surprise. And uh, the pavilion wants its costume back for Aladdin. Yeah, it was Phyllis Logan who gave him the award at the at the Scottish BAFTAs. It was um, it's the guy who wrote the thick of it, Armando Inucci. Um, I, I've probably butchered that name. I'm sorry. Uh, he was meant to be giving him the award because you know Peter Capaldi, one of his breakout most famous performances, was as Malcolm Tucker in the thick of it and in the loop, and um, he was meant to be there to give him the BAFTA, but he wasn't able to make it. So Phyllis Logan did it in his place, and she was terrific. Um, I don't know how to follow that. It's amazing. And uh, Armando, I just like I'm, I'm so sorry Armando can't be here tonight. Uh, I'm glad that he's confounding the racial stereotype uh, of Scottish Italians. It makes me put me in my mind of my parents. I wish they could be here tonight, but uh, they were short-staffed in the chip shop. Um, <laughs> But truly, they did. They, they taught me everything I know, the real Scottish virtues of hard work and sarcasm, uh, <laughs> which have got me through. Outstanding contribution to film and TV, I don't know. I think this is really an award for uh, getting lucky, for being lucky enough to be born in Scotland. <laughs> into a family of immigrants from Ireland and Italy. Lucky enough to meet so many people along the way who changed my life. Bill Forsyth. 40 years ago, I was just up here, an art student, living off Pakora and Lager for breakfast. <laughs> Bill Forsyth scooped me up and put me in Local Hero. It was an act of kindness and confidence that baffled me uh, and much of the industry <laughs> to this day. But I wouldn't be here without him, uh, and nor would a lot of others. Now, can we just say, I'm so glad that Peter Capaldi was able to be the recipient of this award, because, like, obviously, he's... Oh, turn the volume up. I shall. Thank you so much, Lily. Because, like, th there are so many people in this industry who spend years going unappreciated, and then by the time we do really understand the gravity of their contributions to media and pop culture, they're no longer with us, depressingly. But, like, Peter Capaldi, he's, what, in his, like, he's fit in his 50s or his 60s? Like, he's, he's, he's no, you know, super spring chicken, I'm, and I'm so glad that we 
were able to appreciate Capaldi's contributions to uh, to pop culture, whether it be the thick of it, whether it be his Oscar win when he was a, a wee lad, uh, and also being the 12th Doctor in Doctor Who, and also being the head of a Doctor Who Appreciation Society as well. I've seen those photos circulating in the past couple of years about how um, he met Tom Baker and he met John Pertwee, and there's like black and white photographs of him there. I think it's terrific that he was able to get the recognition that he absolutely so deserves with a lifetime achievement award uh but of course the adults will always know him as malcolm tucker and the kids will always know him as doctor who he's got like the best of both worlds the best of both demographics armando fabulous fabulously gifted wonderful kind um armando by the time i'd met him i had had some ups and downs i'd been dropped from the the best series of trollerman uh, uh, when I used to do the voiceover, and I was thrown overboard uh, <laughs> in favour of Ken Stott, and then I was down to doing the voice for um, uh, Scotland's Top Dogs. <laughs> so things were going okay, but not as well as I might have liked. So when I went to the audition for The Thick of It, and Armando said to me, there's no dates, there's no stars, there's no actual script, and would you like to improvise something? I had that look in my face. <laughs> that was basically telling him to fuck the fuck off. <laughs> Which, as it turned out, was the right vibe to bring into the room. <laughs> Can you imagine any parents who were like, oh, you know, kid, your favourite doctor is going to be watching, um, your favourite doctor is going to be getting an award at the BAFTAs, let's watch the clip, and then you just watch Peter Capaldi on stage saying, tell him to fuck the fuck off. Who is Malcolm Tucker? Malcolm Tucker is a character in The Thick of It, um, which is a political satire, which now in the past couple of years has just become like a mirror of reality because our current UK political system is now beyond parody, where he was just swearing. Unfortunately, I cannot play any Thick of It clips because it's going to be um hit by content id oh i can't find the i can't find the quote because i i need i need something more to go on also the chat keeps on freezing so i need to keep on refreshing it like every 30 seconds annoyingly anyway let's play some more he gave me the job and it changed my life scott uh stephen moffat yes i did meet him for the first time at the scottish baftas he had a kind of lost look about him I thought that might be just because he was from Paisley and it was, it was quite, a, quite a big do, you know. Um, but actually he was looking for something. I didn't know whether it was for a place to stick his wee cocktail stick from his BAFTA chipolata. But no, he was looking for a new Doctor Who. And off we went and he took me on the most magical journey, a journey that Shooty is about to embark on. And I suspect... <laughs> Shooty knows this already, because I can see it in his heart and see it in him. But he's about to discover how beautiful and wonderful and cosmic the human race can really be. <laughs> and also he'll be able to spot an anorak in his peripheral vision <laughs> at 50 yards. And he'll have to figure out what to do. Uh, so thank you. <laughs> so yeah, Shooter Gatwell was at the Scottish BAFTAs as well. I think he was nominated there for Sex Education and a few other things as well. But th there were many photographs of him at the BAFTAs with Peter Capaldi uh, and it, the two Scottish doctors. It's wonderful. Uh, along with David Tennant, who, uh, by the way, David Tennant is definitely getting an Outstanding Achievement Award at some point in his life. For all I know, he probably already has one. But yeah, the, the Scottish doctors, David Tennant, Sylvester McCoy, Peter Capaldi, and Shooter Gower. It's, it's a wonderful lineup. Stephen, for that, there's so many people I'd like to thank, but I can't because A, we don't have time, and B, they're not really famous, so you don't care. <laughs> um, it does bring me, make me reflect about all the help I've received from friends, colleagues, those who've encouraged me along the way, people who were kind, people who just gave me the time of day. And it's a timely reminder that we all have a duty to help those trying to start out, to extend a hand. Um, <laughs> but please don't send me your tapes. I'm so busy at the moment. Um, it's been so amazing to work with so many heroes, Terence Davis, James Gunn, James Gandolfini. Um, but it's all about uh, people and the people. Is it me or is his accent a wee bit thicker? He is at the Scottish BAFTAs. I do think either he 
he feels like he feels like he can let rip with his normal accent or um, maybe it's the alcohol. I don't know. He might be a little bit slozzled here because he's at an award ceremony and as is his in a, as is his right to be as well. You love and the people who are around you. Um, am I going on too long? You can go as long okay, as you want. All right. Uh, <laughs> no, I won't. I won't. I'll, I'll be over in a minute. I'll be over in a minute. Yeah. I just want to say about uh, actors. Actors are brilliant. Um, and it's great when you get an award and it's all like this and everything's going really well. But uh, for a lot of actors, it's not going well. Uh, and from day to day, from week to week, it can be really tough. And you kind of get uh, uh, through the door and you kind of get out the door sometimes. Uh, so I just want them to, to, to know that sometimes the stars align and you get lucky. And that's what happened to me. Also, the chat mentioning Sylvester McCoy. I'm like 99% sure I mentioned Sylvester McCoy. I'm like 99% sure that I mentioned him already. But I, I didn't want to um, to ignore all Sylvester McCoy. I apologize if that's what happened. Uh, you did? I'm so, okay, Yeah, I'm, I'm certain I mentioned him. I, I mentioned like four doctors. Sylvester McCoy was one of them. Anyway, right. But yeah, I, I feel like because he's amongst his own kind, the, the superior Scots, uh, he's, he's a bit more Scottish with his accent. So finally, I'm just about to go. My wonderful agent, Kate Morrison at B-Side. Thank you, you're absolutely brilliant. Uh, all the team at the Devil's Hour, thank you so much for all that wonderful work. All the team on Criminal Record who had a riot last night. To my dear friends and loved ones, particularly my sister Stella, Sissy, Dan, the glorious infant phenomenon Finlay, my darling wife Elaine, it's your strength, kindness, wisdom and love that's enabled me to have this career. You've always been there through all the ups and downs and that you chose to share your life with me is the greatest luck of all. So thank you very much. Thank you, BAFTA. And thank you. All right, go away with your copyrighted music. Anyway, yeah, I, I wanted to play that because Peter Capaldi is such a, of course, a wonderful performer. Like when it comes to uh, all of his roles, from the thick of it to Doctor Who, to even just the, the smaller supporting roles, like uh, like in Paddington, where he plays uh, the the racist neighbor who hates uh, who hates bears, it, it's always just so. Uh, it makes such memorable impressions and I think a lot of that is because of his really uh, powerful presence his thick Scottish accent as well is uh, it, it's wonderful to to hear as well how just unashamedly Scottish he is which is why I think he's such a, a great advocate for Scottish talent but I, I they were, they were talking about, because um, um, Emando uh, wrote a speech that Phyllis Logan read out for that award ceremony, and he was saying just how incredibly uh, devoted to the role of Malcolm Tucker, Peter Capaldi was, where he would be... I, in his trailer he'd be offset just going through the lines and the monologues over and over and over and over again until he could recite them perfectly and at full force and I think that commitment absolutely shows when he's uh, he's playing the role uh, I I can only play so much so I've gone to the Malcolm Tucker Rampage compilation to the most replayed moment let's see uh, what the what the democratic process says for for this Malcolm Tucker bit take those your those fucking no oh, fuck off oh, Malcolm. Fuck. <laughs> Jesus Christ! He's so good in this role. And I think that there's a reason why when um, Peter Capaldi was announced as the 12th Doctor, there were so many memes and references to the role of Malcolm Tucker because that was what he was most well-known for at the time. And the fact that this massive sweary angry force of nature political employee in the thick of it was going to embody the kind and warm facade of the doctor was such a fun departure just to watch happen 
and I th the memes at the time were outstanding and I loved everything about I've incorporated some of the memes in some of my reviews of the 12th Doctor era as well and whenever I review more 12th Doctor stories I'm going to try and get a thick of it moment uh, th there's even a bit in uh, the thick of it where he talks about um, one person being a broom or being a brush and when he talks about the half face man in deep breath being like a broom and you replace the handle is it the same broom at that moment is absolutely happening but it's it's a moment um there's there's also um so much in his career as well where um he you get the sense that he's an astonishingly humble person like when you had um uh him at the scottish baftas and the the compilations were playing and people were praising him he looked quite sheepish and a little bit embarrassed in his seat and i don't mean that like in a bad way but he just comes across as an outstandingly humble person and i think watching um peter capaldi's career progress and then seeing him embody the 12th doctor a doctor who starts who starts out his run in a really difficult place because you, you we've had some behind the scenes stories come out for series eight recently how whenever they wrote a story with the 12th doctor with peter capaldi Stephen moffat would send the draft back to the writer and say he needs to be meaner he needs to be harsher and then after going through that process several times the writers were like we, we're not writing the doctor anymore we're not writing doctor who anymore what is this and i think that really it it it's i'm peter capaldi was clearly up for the challenge as an actor but i don't think in terms of a story capacity and it being on the page it being on the paper the am i a good man story arc of series eight i don't think that really paid off unfortunately that's not capaldi's fault but then as you see him grow and become uh, a bit softer and those harsh edges have been rounded a little bit and sanded away over the years and you get peak capaldi in my opinion at the end of series nine with heaven sent of course which is a tour de force essentially a 50 minute monologue and then in uh, series 10 with bill and nardole and that is peak 12th doctor and i don't like twice upon a time but i do love peter capaldi in that story and his final moments doctor i let you go and seeing a super fan the head of a doctor who appreciation society when he was growing up being a super fan on the level of david tennant when he was growing up seeing him become the doctor and embody that philosophy of kindness was so rewarding as a fan to see and not just a fan of doctor who but just a fan of peter capaldi in general and we also know that peter capaldi did not start his time in the doctor who universe as the 12th doctor he was also in um uh, children of earth the torchwood story where he played a character called frobisher and uh, it's such a dark like fate for that character and his family in that story and it was also in the fires of pompeii and he was meant to resemble and embody the average family from pompeii who was going to be the massive victim of vesuvius he was meant him and the family in general were meant to be a stand-in of what was good about pompeii civilization that's a lot of pressure to put on just actors shoulders a group of actors soldiers but they all did it and it was spearheaded by peter capaldi i think that seeing um capaldi flourish in multiple roles in the doctor who universe in torchwood in doctor who series four and then as the 12th doctor proper you know who frowned me this face has been so rewarding to watch i don't think we'll ever know what happened towards the end of his run as the 12th doctor whether or not he was kicked or if he left of his own accord we're not going to know for a while if we ever do know unfortunately but there's there's a reason why even if peter capaldi as a incarnation of the doctor does not top many does not top all of the fan lists i think peter capaldi is along with actors like david tennant possibly the best actor the most qualified the most professional the best in terms of raw acting ability to play the doctor and i think that as a fandom we were absolutely privileged to have him be the scottish doctor i think it was wonderful to see it's the behind the scenes stuff on the show that recently hasn't done big finish he might just want to step away from it for a little bit you know he's doing he, like it's not like he's been quiet since he finished on doctor who he's been doing the paddington films he was in suicide squad the suicide squad with james gunn he's recently been in the devil's hour for amazon prime which has recently been renewed for two more seasons so there's more going on so 
you know, he, he's a busy man. And I also think that Jacob Dudman has been doing a really good job filling his shoes in Big Finish in the audio medium. I will be interested to know, and obviously they are, they have no obligation to tell us, but I'll be curious to know what, if any, advice Peter Capaldi gave to Shuti Gatwa. I think if, if I were to, like, ever be a moderator on, like, a Doctor Who panel, where, or if I were to interview them, I would ask, did your predecessor ask you... Did you ask your predecessor for any advice or did you offer any advice to your successor? For example, I would love to know. I'd, I probably would ask Christopher Eccleston this about David. Like, did you get in touch with David Tennant at all or did he reach out to you or anything? I'd love to know if there was any sort of exchange there. But I'd love to know, you know, was Peter Capaldi in communication with Matt Smith or Jodie Whittaker? And I'm sure that he's given some advice to Shooty at the BAFTAs. I'm sure drinks have been exchanged. There's, there's a really funny story with Peter Davison where um, uh, Peter Davison met Tom Baker at a bar at BBC Television Centre, and Tom Baker apparently gave Peter Davison some advice on how to be the Doctor, but Peter Davison did not hear a single word that Tom Baker said because the music in the bar was so loud. So he, to this day, Peter Davison has no idea what the, what the advice that his predecessor had for him to take on this iconic Time Lord role, which I just think is very, very funny. But when it comes to Peter Capaldi's, and the future of the show i'm sure years down the line he might do big finish not you know he has no obligation to he might appear in a multi-doctor story or something once the dust has settled a little bit more but he might not we don't know but i think as fans as doctor who fans we have massive expectations for you know multi-doctor stories returning to the role all of the other doctors did it so you have to do it which i think is a bit unfair to sort of throw on an actor who sees it as maybe an important part of their career, an influential part of their career, but still a job that they did. Like, think about a job that you were maybe doing five or six years ago, and then all of a sudden people keep saying, will you go back to that job for a bit? Will you go back to that? Well, maybe you don't want to do that. But I think as fans, we need to appreciate that maybe Peter Capaldi... Uh, you know, he might have some bad blood with him and the BBC. We don't know. We might never know. But we should also be incredibly grateful that we got Peter Capaldi for the time that we did. That we got him for three seasons, a bunch of Christmas specials, that we were able to see somebody truly embody what it means to be the Doctor. Somebody who, you know, has two hearts because he cares twice as much. And I think Capaldi embodied, embodied that beautifully. Lily, who has sent you a fan audio worth looking at, I keep coming back to it uh, every time I remember it, 12 and 9. Is that uh, Exhausted Supplies? Um, full disclosure, I've worked... Jonathan Carley was in this as the 12th Doctor, who I've worked with before. He's our current war doctor for Big Finish, and he's Graham O'Brien uh, in my Collateral of Ivanhoe project. Is there, a, like, a 12th Doctor... Look, it's our business. It's just how we make our living. But you're not living. You're dying. You're all here just waiting to die. That isn't how business works. Look at this graveyard. It is utterly full. I'd say you're burying the new coffins on top of the old ones. That's not a funeral service. Where are the mourners? Doesn't anyone come to visit? Yeah, that's really good. J him and Jacob Dubman do such good impressions. But, um, hey, buddy, enough with the curse words. His response to that is my favourite exchange in the history of cinema. Oh, uh, yeah, let's put that on. Uh, Malcolm Tucker, kiss my... Here... <laughs> <laughs> the the title gives it away. Up with curse words, all right? Curse my sweaty balls, you fat fuck! <laughs> <laughs> I did not, I did not know that that edit was in it. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant stuff, Louis Clark. Ex excellent troll. Excellent work. This has been your three year long gambit to try and make this happen on a live stream. Well done, Louis. Well done. You, you, your parents are very proud. <laughs>